David and I were chatting off air. We want to know what crackers are. <laughs> Crackers, you know, we were saying it's not the thing that goes bang, quite clearly. It sounds like one huge bang. It sounds bang. like a big bang. <laughs> now, um, a cracker is, a, is w where you take ethane, which comes from, from, um, from the ground, from natural gas, and you crack that into ethylene. And ethylene is the building block for the whole plastics industry in the world. And from the, um, from the ethylene, you then make a variety of projects, whether it's polyethylene or a range of chemical projects. But you can crack ethane. Now, ethane in the U.S., because of the shale gale that we've seen, is at its lowest costs in forever. And if you take that low-cost feed, uh, feedstock and you build a world-scale cracker, the effect of that is that you are in the lowest 30% of the cost curve in the world. And therefore, it's a really competitive right. opportunity. What do you use it for? I mean, what do you use? Where is its best uses? Is it used as energy or is it used as... No, no. It's chemical project. If we look at the GTL that we also oh, yes. announced, okay. so the gas of course, to that's, the, that's, that's the gas to liquids. And there we take, and there we take gas, dry gas. Mm -hmm. We convert that gas into high-value, high-quality fuels and also chemicals. And it's the first time that we've added the chemicals. In Qatar, for example, we're producing high-quality diesel and naphtha. We're going to do exactly the same in Louisiana, mm. but we're also going to make chemicals, associated chemicals. But the cracker is not for energy. That is to produce downstream derivative chemicals that you use in the chemical industry, mostly plastics, antifreeze, mm -hmm. surfactants, a whole range of So it's of 11 to 14 billion US dollars. The, the governor of Louisiana extremely excited about the foreign direct investment. In fact, if he's correct, it's the biggest in the history of the US. Yeah, and you've quoted the number for the GTL plant, 14, uh, fr um, 11 to 14. Mm -hmm. The cracker we're talking about 5 to 7 billion. So together combined, that'll be in the order of 16 to 21 billion dollars. Yeah, and that is awesome. significant on a single project. It'll be a game changer. But it's the first time that we'll bring, there are other ethane crackers in the USA. Many has been announced. We're planning to be early to get the gap, uh, to, to, to capitalize on the gap between the feedstock price and the chemical prices. On the GTL side, if I can, that's the first GTL plant in the USA. Mm -hmm. They've got an abundance of gas. They've got too much gas. The price is down. If you can utilize that gas and turn it into high quality fuels and products and have more uh, security of supply, it is going to be a significant opportunity. So, well, we're going to get Sassel's share price up as we continue this discussion. So, we can just have so. a look at uh, what, yeah. what happened. To me, one of the risks are, is that, that you're making a decision on the low price of gas in the US, and one needs to get a sense of what's the prospect of that remaining low. Uh, because as we can see even between Europe and the US, just th uh, Brent and West Texas for instance, how that has sort of shifted around and, and that could quite easily tilt as well as gas supplies for instance come on in Europe for instance, that's, that's, that's a huge industry in its own right but of course they've got dominated by Russia and then the, 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 the prices are actually quite high at the moment but that can change. Surely that, that can pose quite a big risk. Yes, and it does. Yeah. So I'm talking about the low cost of gas today. Our view of the future, we've looked at the range of price forecasts for gas and for fuels and chemicals in the USA. And we are comfortable that even when we stress test the economics, if you take the situation in the US, mm -hmm. if you take the world scale plants, and if you take the need for these fuels and chemicals, we are comfortable that the economics on this works at the higher gas price. Yes. In the USA, as you know today, with the advent of the shale gas, there's more than 80 to 100 years of supply yeah. and increasing daily. So we are pretty comfortable uh, in, in Gentlemen, the I want to ask you yeah. now about the investment case uh, for, yes, for SAS. So we're at yeah. 369, we're down mm -hmm. one and one third of a percent on the today, day. Yeah. One of the elements that many of the fund managers who hold Sassel, we know that there are many, have been waiting for the international community to take note and see a re-rating in this stock driven by the international community. David, I'm asking you this question. Is that is this a game changer? Ernst says it's a game changer? I, I, in my view, it is. For, in my for view, I, I don't think we've grasped the significance of number one, Sassel's technology and the returns they will make. I was The question I was going to ask is who's funding this? Is this going to be solely Sassel or will they look for outside partners? Regardless, it's got to have massive, massive benefit. I think in years massive to come... Massive benefit for Sassel's share price. For, for Sassel's share price. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm absolutely astonished 
that we're not building any future into the share price. We're looking at yeah. where it is now and valuing it, and even and now it's at a very low level. So you're buying it at a 5 or 6% dividend yield with all this prospect. It's just crazy. Let's talk about the funding model. <laughs> is it Sassel and Sassel alone? The opportunity that, that we have to mimic a Secunda in, in Lake Charles, in Louisiana, is enormous. So if at all possible, if we can fund this, if we can find the money, which we are positive we can, to build that as an integrated multi-asset site for SAS or there, the, the value is significant. Mm -hmm. So we will consider other alternatives, but we, for that specific site, our preference by far would be to, would be, to be wholly SAS or owned and to run that as a secunda mm -hmm. in Louisiana. In Louisiana. Um, would this be a model that you could follow if we actually do extensive fracking in the Karoo? In other words, is it something that you uh, could, could consider for You knew the fracking question was coming. Yeah. You just didn't know it was going to come from Chris. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, I can't speak for the guru at this point in time. Right. I don't know about the, the, com uh, the okay. commerciality of the shale gas. Yes. The USA is unique in the yeah. world. It's got extensive infra infrastructure. Yeah. It's, got, it's got pipelines crisscrossing that country. So to replicate the U.S. situation in any other place, including China, Poland, Russia, South yeah. Africa, will be, will be tough. A lot so if we were to be able to afford gas and price gas at $3.50 MMBTU, yeah. then this would be a game changer also in South, South Africa. Africa. Right. But I think the jury is out to see whether we can do it, yeah. whether it's commercially viable, whether we can do it environmentally friendly, yeah. and so and I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to make that call. I was just saying, right, what, what if... You know, that you know I've got two stream. more stories to get in there. Ernst, thanks so much for your time. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of stories that d d don't go. They just uh, want to run off. We've got two minutes left on the show. Aspen has uh, finalised the acquisition of medicines from GlaxoSmithKline. That's for 163 million pounds. I think this is pounds. just uh, signing the, the deal. Was the August. deal was announced. Nothing untoward. No. We're going to get that graph up in terms of, of Aspen's share price as well. Uh, Chris, any thoughts on, on Aspen as an investment opportunity right I now? I think it's one of those solid companies mm. that, that mm. you know, is developed as a blue chip that one would have as a core, core holding in a portfolio. You keep holding it. Yeah, I think David? so. David? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Datatech has reported that it may not reach its published forecasts. I don't know if you guys picked up on this. The Global ICT Solutions mm. and Services Group sees full-year headline earnings per share at approximately 50 US cents. Now, that's a 70 percent slide. I'm going I'm to mm. defer that to Jeff because I don't no. watch data don't tech. Don't you watch IT? <laughs> no. what? I know data tech. Don't, I haven't looked yeah, at it for a long time. I think yeah. most of the operations are outside. It's not as big a company it, as we uh, make out to be. Yeah, it is a, you know, f from a South African point of view, it's a rent hedge stock. Mm. However, when you've got such a disappointment on earnings, you'd want to actually say, let's just pass this one by until we actually know what the, 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 the cyclical bottom is. And, and actually take it from there. You know, what's the recovery you know, potential from there? To what extent is it hit by the global uh, you know, slowdown? And so this is a wait and see at 54 yeah. Rand. All right, I'm going to get Ernest smiling before he, he leaves the studio today. On Sassel, is it a buy at 369, I, David Shapiro? I Chikira? can't be more specific. I think that, I think if you, if you want to get resources in this country, just buy two shares, buy BHP Bulletin and Sassel. You don't need the rest. Chris no. Hart? No, I agree. Mm -hmm. Sassel is, to me, a core holding in it. So Ernst, I've done the work for you. There's <laughs> nothing more I can say. I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, between the governor of Louisiana and these two gentlemen, <laughs> we've got it made. You've got it 